Hello from 538's newsroom. We've been keeping track of some of the House and Senate races where there have been calls so far this evening. But of course, we're also tracking 36 governor's races. And we've seen some flips already this evening. They were expected, but they're nonetheless interesting. So here with me to discuss is my colleague, Amelia thompson DeVoe. Hey, Amelia. How's hey, it going? I'm all right. I'm well still caffeinated? awake. No, no, not well caffeine. caffeinated. I can't Is... do caffeine after 12 p.m. even for election night. So I am rolling on sugar vibes, right sugar and vibes, sugar and vibes. Yeah, <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> that'll that'll keep me going for a while. Okay, so both Maryland and Massachusetts are very blue states that have been led by Republican governors for the past four years, and in some cases, long, cases longer. Let's talk about Massachusetts first, where Charlie Baker was a quite popular Republican governor. He did not run for re-election. That has flipped. Who won? And um, what does it mean? So Mara Healy has won, um, and it's historic for a few reasons. She's going to be the first openly lesbian governor of a U.S. state. Um, and she also won the governor's seat, and then a woman also won the lieutenant governor's seat. So this is going to be the first time in U.S. history that two women have simultaneously served as governor and lieutenant governor, which I actually— when I saw this statistic, I was like, this must be the first time in Massachusetts history. But no, it's in the whole history of the country because we have had very few female governors. Right. OK, so it sounds like Maryland has also made history in some sense. They've also had a popular Republican governor who did not run for reelection there. What's up? So Wes Moore is going to be the next governor of Maryland, and he's making history because he will be the first black governor of the state. And that was a race where, as you said, the, the Republican governor, Larry Hogan, was term limited, couldn't run again. Um, and the Republicans nominated a pretty far right candidate um, to run against Moore. So even though Maryland's a blue state, Moore was probably going to win. Republicans may have made it a little bit easier for him. And that was one of the races where Democrats were actually backing the Republican nominee because they wanted a sort of more extremist candidate to win that race so that they would have a better chance of flipping the seat. And they ultimately did, it sounds like. Yeah. I mean, I don't think they really needed to hedge their bets on that one. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> I guess they did. And I guess it turned out well. So. All right. Well, those are two governor's mansions that have already flipped so far this evening. Not big surprises, but we're starting to get more and more results in the governor's race in Pennsylvania, in Wisconsin. We still don't have that many results in Nevada or Arizona, but of course, we're going to be keeping track. Those are some states where this is a truly competitive race, and uh, we, we have no idea yet who will prevail. Although, I think in Pennsylvania, we have some sense who might prevail. It looks like Josh Shapiro is doing yeah. quite well. I, and that wouldn't be a huge surprise either. Again, talking about another Republican-nominated far-right candidate, Doug Mastriano, he never had a great shot or certainly did not go into this with a great shot. So if Josh Shapiro wins, that will not be a huge surprise. All right. Hasn't been projected yet, but we shouldn't be surprised if it does happen. Amelia, thanks so much for chatting with me. Come back and talk some more. But for now, make sure to follow along on the live blog at 538.com. Mm -hmm.